Hello, my name is Simon Johnston. I'm the CEO of Icon Relocation and welcome to our ongoing series of videos reviewing the housing stock in and around London. Now, for those who haven't seen these videos before, a quick guide. Uh, the data here is collated from a range of online sources. Uh, it's important to also point out that this is showing what is new onto the market. It is not showing what is available rent today. They may be similar, but not necessarily the same thing. This is for guide purposes only, albeit we believe a fairly accurate one and also to show that all the data on the screen at any given time is in proportion to each other. Now on the left we actually have the legend and what this is showing is the higher the tower the higher the level of stock that's available in that given location and obviously the redder it is in colour the higher it is in cost. Now we cover the whole of the UK predominantly focusing on, on England at the moment but as you can see we're going to just focus in on what's happening in London. Now today's date is the 5th uh, 5th of October. So what we're going to have a look at is what's come on since the 1st of October to the 5th of October. Now also we've got a few uh, enriched features on the video this time, I'm delighted to say. So what we actually have is we have the ability to now filter by rent. So I'll give an example of that shortly. And also you'll notice on the bottom here, which I hope is not too distracting, we can actually show you what the statistics are. So we can actually show you how many properties have come on and what the average rent uh, is showing for that given location. So with that in mind, let's have a look at all the new properties that's come onto the market in the last five days. And the answer is, well, unsurprisingly, not a huge amount. So it looks quite good, but actually, if we look at some of these areas, say Docklands, which is a firm for Ever Divine, you know, 25 properties have come on there in total, which is not too bad in the last five days. But if you look at some of the key areas outside London, for example, you can see literally it's one or two properties that have come on some of these key locations. However, let's start filtering down. So let's have a look at one bedroom. Now, the first thing you see is everything's the same color. Now, there's one really expensive property that's come on the market here. So let's just filter that out because it's kind of throwing the overall statistics. And we can see what has happened in the last five days in regard to new stock. Now, a few things jump out is Croydon. Uh, we said this before, Croydon usually has some good stock level, so 11 new properties have come on that area. That's just north of Croydon. Also, right out here in Hemel Hempstead, which is probably a commute f uh, too far for a lot of people, a lot of properties have come on there. But otherwise, it's relatively modest numbers. So in Docklands, we've got about nine new properties that come on. In parts of West London, you can see that we've had nine new properties, albeit very expensive. The average price there is over £3,000, that would be around Kensington, so very costly. So let's have a look and say well, what's happened on the two-bedroom category. And I think we can lose this filter now. And what we can actually see is quite a bit more has come on. Now, you may have heard me say this before, so sorry to be a scratch record, but Docklands, this is a firm favourite because the stock levels are pretty good. So you can see two bedrooms, we've had 10 new properties come on the last few days, which is great. Uh, going into sort of parts of the expensive parts of London, we've had a number there, we've had a few around here, let's just zoom in a bit. Uh, just sort of uh, south of the Thames, had a number of properties, but by and large, the stock levels are relatively speaking modest. Now, you can see this number come on a Sutton, which is really encouraging, um, but around the area around Richmond Park, I say this in most videos, you can see that the stock level is pretty slow. Parts of North London are improving, um, so you can actually see we've got a number, two properties there. Going right out here, we can see about five properties, so not a, a vast number of properties that come on. Let's have a look at three bedrooms. And you can see that on the whole, it's pretty low, especially when you look outside London. So if you look at, say, Surrey, one of the key areas that you want to relocate, re relocate to, sorry, uh, you can see there's not a lot of stock there. Again, in North London, not a lot. Now, however, there is some good stuff that's coming on around Paddington, by the looks of it, North London, about nine properties there. There's a few in Docklands, and there's a few here just to the south of London. But by and large, three bedroom properties are in low supply. So let's look at four bedrooms, unsurprisingly very little, and in five bedrooms, well, less, and in six bedrooms, I suggest there is borderline nothing. So something has come on right out here in the Hounslow area. So let's just go back and have a look at everything for a second and see, well, okay, so what's this telling us? Well, what it's telling us is the stock level in, in around London and the home counties which are the counties that border onto London, you can see stock is potentially very low. It's not really increasing. What might be of interest, though, is have a look at two-bedroom properties and actually say, well, 
how much would you need to spend to actually live in some of these key areas? So I'm just going to put in a typical filter of, say, between £1,500 and £2,000 per calendar month. And at a glance, you can see which areas might work. Now, central London, unsurprisingly, the answer is not really no. But on the outskirts of London, you've got some good variables and good options. Again, especially if you're willing to commute into London, so parts around Sutton, uh, here, Croydon, here, you can see some good stock levels. Now, I'm delighted to say that we are making this available for all our clients and assignees. So if anybody is relocating and trying to work out what they should budget for, this is a perfect tool. Now, as I said, this is a guide only. We can't say this is actually guaranteed figures. However, in the moment, we actually are finding that this is predominantly accurate. Now, if there's any information you'd like to know about what's going on uh, in regard to London as a whole or across the whole of the UK, please ask. We have a huge le level of data and we're very happy to explore this in more detail. If there's anything else we can do to help in the meantime, if you'd like to look at other timelines, for example, or any other location across uh, England predominantly, all you have to do is ask and I'll be very happy to explore it. I hope you find this helpful and I look forward to talking to you in the next video.